Welcome. If you're new around here, I'm a narrator that focuses on Glitch in the Matrix stories. This is a compilation of videos from my channel for the month of September. Let's get into it. First story. Story title. Someone warned me about something big. Author name. Daisy Burko. I was at a surprise birthday party for myself back in 2017. I maybe drank a single beer. I wasn't by any means under the influence of anything. I was sitting talking to my girlfriend when the entire room went quiet very suddenly. Like people's mouths were moving, but there weren't any sounds. Then a voice I've never heard before said, your dad's gonna kill himself. Your dad's in pain. Then as quickly as it showed up, it left. The party noises came back. I got up checking around me as if it was some weird joke, maybe a prank. At the time, my dad was missing for a year to date. He was a narcissist, and I couldn't fathom him just killing himself for anything. It's very much not him. Anyways, two days later, I was watching TV, and the same voice happened again. The room went quiet, and it said, It's time. Again, everything went back to normal. The next night, a knock is at the door. At the door is a police officer, and he basically says that my dad committed suicide a few states away from my family and myself. The voice hasn't showed up since my dad's passing. I've had some neurological tests done, psychological tests, and no doctor can explain what happened those nights. I personally think I was getting a small warning like, this is gonna happen, so be prepared. He was my best friend. Personal thoughts. First off, I'm very sorry for your loss. I know it's been a few years, but I'm sure it must still sting even just to type it out for us to read. So as far as the glitch itself, well, this is the first time I've heard of an actual voice just appearing without any obvious source. A guardian angel type does spring to mind though. Not to protect your dad, maybe it's impossible to protect him from his own choices. But maybe as you say, to brace yourself from the overwhelming shock and pain that can come from losing a family member, or anyone you care about. And I definitely don't think you're crazy. I think this probably happens all the time, but people are fearful to ever say it because, well, people would think they're crazy. At any rate, I hope your dad's in a better place now. Story title. I hallucinated a real person. Author name. Mayil Yi. I am terminally ill with an illness that is moving very slowly, but surely. I've been hallucinating from the illness. Nothing weird or glitchy about that, however, something happened to me the other night I just can't explain. I hallucinated the same woman twice in the same evening. The third time she came to me, she told me her name, even insisted on the spelling, an unusual variant. She also told me the name of her town in the USA. I'm like, what the hell? So I googled it. She existed. Died about 10 years ago. There was a photograph of her daughter, and she looked just like the woman. This person is not famous. I've never left Australia, and I have no reason to ever google her town, ever. I can't explain this one at all. Personal thoughts. I really am so sorry. There's so much pain in these glitches today. I am hoping for a miracle cure for your illness. You really never know, so please, don't lose hope. Now I think there is an ethereal connection between all of us, not in a way we currently can detect, but that is revealed in fragments in those weakened moments where our mind is, well, opened. From fear maybe, or intense emotions, sometimes mind-altering substances. This doesn't mean everything you see is a hallucination. I think what you saw was more of a spirit echo. This woman probably doesn't exist, even as a ghost. But you could 
feel her remnants, if that makes sense. Story title. A weird call from my dead grandmother. Author name. G Unit 02. About a few years back, my grandmother passed away. A month after she had passed away, we were sitting in the kitchen reminiscing about the days when she was still around. My mom used to call my grandma every night to talk to her about how things are going back home. We live in Australia, but my grandmother was back home in PNG. If for some reason my mom didn't call her, my grandma would always call at night to make sure she was okay. Long story short, our conversation just evolved into one of those what if kind of conversations. What if they'd been able to call from the afterlife? It sounds dumb when I type this out now, but we were in a weird headspace at the time. But almost on cue after I said that, my mom's phone started ringing. Incoming call from mom. The contact photo of my grandma was now ringing on screen. We both kind of just froze while staring at the phone. After about 10 seconds, my mom answered the call. Nothing but static. Even weirder is that my mom was in possession of my grandma's phone at the time. It was put away in a box that contained a few of my grandma's items at the top of the bookshelf in her room. The phone was dead. No charge whatsoever. The same thing happened exactly a year after her death, the same day she had died. There were a few smaller things that happened, but nothing as concrete as this. Just a weird story I thought I'd share. Personal Thoughts I've heard so many stories of loved ones being contacted post-death. There has to be something to this. And in your case, you weren't alone. You were with your mom so it can't be a hallucination. Then as far as number spoofing goes, this is done usually in an attempt to bypass dual factor authentication. It doesn't do anything to call someone and leave them with static. It's not even a good prank, it's terrible. So I don't think it's that. I think legitimately you were contacted by your grandmother, or at least she tried to. I don't know if it's as a spirit or as a ascended being, whatever it may be. The rules to the afterlife are very murky, but perhaps we'll find out soon enough. Have you ever had an afterlife experience, especially from someone that you knew, that was close to you? As a friend or enemy, doesn't matter. Fourth Story Story Title This is probably going to sound insignificant in comparison. Author Name Brainless insaneness. But the weirdest thing just happened. I'm still shaking. I'm cooking breakfast for my family, and I'm finishing up making bagels. I bought cream cheese yesterday, a two pack Philadelphia, because ours went bad recently. I opened up the package of cream cheese, just the top cardboard part, and I remember thinking, God, these never open right, because some of the cardboard was stuck to the side. I put the second unopened cream cheese back in the fridge, and the open one down on the counter, when I went to ask my boyfriend if he wanted toast or a bagel. When I came back, the cream cheese was completely sealed, slash unopened. I was like, okay, well I must have put the open one in the fridge. I remember exactly where I put it, on the door. No, that one was completely sealed as well. So the first thought was, well, I must have had a third, so I frantically searched the fridge and house, thinking maybe I put it down on my way to ask. And nothing, no open packages anywhere. What the actual hell? I've had stuff happen like this before, but not anywhere near as concrete as this. Any logical explanations are appreciated. Personal thoughts. There's nothing insignificant to describe this glitch, 
Not at all. I've spoken about my own comparable story before, actually, where one of my tennis balls was lost, vanishing in front of my own eyes. It seems like a small detail, but it truly does make you question your own sanity and what this reality truly is. Sadly, I don't have a logical explanation to offer. All I can say is, this does happen to people, and you're not crazy. Fifth Story Story Title Secondhand Story, but pretty interesting. Author Name Funky Kingston 223 My dad is a poet and performer, and often performs in bars doing spoken word. He sometimes does something at these shows he calls The Book of the Strange, which involves picking someone out of the crowd and enticing them to tell their craziest story. What is the strangest thing that's ever happened to you? Seems like it would be awkward, but my dad really does have a knack for putting people at ease and drawing out the genuinely wacky stories that 99% of people have in their repertoire. This subreddit is basically the same thing people telling their unexplainable incidents. I even reported one of mine on here. So I figured I'd write out one of the stories that a man, a bland old government worker, like most people in the capital city we live in, told us one night at a local bar. This guy was in rural Central Africa, doing development work for a period of months. He had been in a small, more remote village, and was driving back to his house on a barely there dirt road through the middle of the savannah. It was nighttime, and the moon and stars were sparkling bright. As he drove, he saw something in the middle of the road. As he came up to it, he realized it was a donkey, a big dusty donkey, completely unbothered by the car and refusing to move. The guy honked a couple times, then got out of the car to try to move it. Just as he was getting out of his car, he was hit by a massive wave of dusty particles. A sandstorm had come out of absolutely nowhere, and he quickly jumped back into his car for safety. He sat in his car for a few seconds as this extremely intense sandstorm passed the car, completely obscuring all the windows with thick clouds of brown dirt. The sandstorm passed as quickly as it had came. The whole thing lasted maybe 10 seconds, and then it was right back to a clear moonlit night, but with a big difference. The donkey was gone, and as the guy stepped out of his car, he realized that the road he was on was also gone, and there was a gigantic cliff right in front of him, about as far as the donkey was from the car. If he had gone even a little further from his car, he would have hurled it off this precipice and fallen to his certain death gigantic drop. Was a donkey an animal guardian of some kind? Which was fake? The original landscape he saw, or the cliff? He turned around and drove away. Pretty crazy story, huh? There's tons more where that came from, collected from some people who you wouldn't really think had stories like that under their belt. Personal Thoughts Yeah, I can definitely agree that's a wild story. Bordering perhaps a bit closer to the paranormal, this absolutely does strike me like an African-flavored guardian angel experience. There's been a few of those I've read on this channel, but they aren't that frequent. Speaking with someone with an intense fear of heights, what this guardian angel did to save this man's life, man, can't be thanked enough. But can you even thank them? Do they hear us? I don't know. You know, I also wonder why these guardian angels, specifically, if we want to call them that, why do they help some of us, but not all? In fact, it's really not even the correct way to frame it, because they help very, very few. A tiny percent of a percent of a percent. So it's not even remotely close to all of us. So what makes those people they help special? That is to say, you know, is it some cosmic grand plan that they're a small part of, so they can't yet die? It's possible, although I'm not sure I really believe in fate. The problem with fate is it invalidates free will. It would mean that our decisions are already set in stone. What we're going to choose, 
is already decided. I don't like that idea. Maybe it's true, but I'd rather hope it's not. Maybe that's just me. Have you ever had a guardian angel experience? Been saved or warned in some way by a force you can't describe or see? Let me know in the comments. That concludes this little story. I hope you enjoyed my narration of it. If you did, consider leaving a like. And also, if you're new around here, consider subscribing. Sixth story. Story title. I glitched? Author name. Frankie ZMA. I guess that would be right. That I glitched. That morning, I had woken with a splitting headache. My house of five was unusually quiet as I left to walk to my classes. I lived a seven minute walk away from my school, but I was running late, so I had to run through the dew filled grass, getting my shoes and jeans soaked. I got there in time, and sat at my desk in my home room. That weird ten minutes before class, so your teachers can send the office a list of who is there and who's absent. I have a last name at the beginning of the alphabet so my desk was directly in front of my teacher. Mr. R always had a way of cheering me up, so when he saw me sit down in a funk, he played this funny video on the smart board to cheer me up. We had block scheduling, so after homeroom, we would be in class for 80ish minutes. Towards the end of class, I kept feeling my phone buzz and buzz constantly. <laughs> My parents were freaking out because apparently the school told them that I was absent, but I was very clearly here. I responded with a picture of Miss Lindbergh teaching. Halfway through my next period, my English teacher got a call. Hello, yes. Hmm, I don't think I saw her. Sarah, has anyone seen her? She now speaks to our class. Every half awake teenage classmate looks around but says nothing. I am dead dumbfounded. I'm staring directly at her as she scans the room, and I raise my hand. I genuinely think this is a prank. I follow up with, I'm right here, and finally I'm seen. She just says, oh, there she is, I almost missed her. It was almost as if I popped out of nowhere. They call me to the office, where my parents and homeroom teacher are. My mom is losing it. Apparently on top of not being in school, I wasn't at a dentist appointment that I was supposed to go to before school, so everyone thought I was abducted. I was a goody goody two shoes kid then, so skipping class wouldn't make sense. I responded to your text. I sent you a picture of class. No you did not. I go to check my phone. No message sent. I look at my teacher like, what the heck? Maybe he accidentally marked me absent, causing all this. But he says he never even saw me, and apparently Mrs. Lindbergh didn't either, when asked. My parents had texted my friends who I passed in the hallways, all said they didn't know where I was. I was like a walking ghost. Very weird. Personal Thoughts This is one of the most intense glitches I've ever read, because one of my personal fears is being forgotten, cast into oblivion, or just being viewed as crazy. Waking up and realizing, the world is just not right, but you're the only one who notices. This isn't exactly like that, but it still touches on it, so I can slightly imagine how you must have felt. And how could you be a ghost? I've never heard of transformations into ghostly essence without first dying. Outside of the out-of-body manifestations, but those don't result in teleportation. In other words, if it was an out-of-body experience, you'd have reappeared where your physical body originated the experience from. So, normally it would be like a dreamlike state, you're in your bed, you would be able to project yourself around, but then when that ends, you would just wake up in your bed. So in this case it just, it doesn't fit either. I really love glitches like this, where I too am completely dumbfounded. Well I mean, I like reading them. 
I'm glad I didn't experience it myself. Seventh Story Story Title A Very Weird Spine-Chilling Call Author Name Phoenix Ooze Primax Hey guys, I work in a call center as a customer service representative. This happened about three years ago, but it still baffles my mind. I got a call from a customer complaining about his bill and wanted to file a dispute. Usually bill disputes may take a while to be investigated, about five business days, so I advise the customer named Mr. Joe that I'll call him back after five business days and saved his telephone number for the scheduled follow-up. So I called him back with the same telephone number and I spoke to a woman, her name is Mary. I asked her if I can speak to Mr. Joe to give him the good news that his bill dispute has been resolved and he will get the right amount of credits. Mrs. Mary was shocked when I mentioned the name of Mr. Joe. She says that was her husband, but she was shocked because she just informed me that her husband, Mr. Joe, died five years ago. She admitted that she does have a bill dispute, but doesn't have time to call because of her busy schedule. She thanked me about resolving the bill dispute, even if she didn't call, but still is baffled that her husband died five years ago, made a phone call to file a dispute. She also told me that her husband is the one who was always in charge of bills, and was the one who would follow up with them. Very weird, right? Personal Thoughts So the husband is still taking care of his wife, even from the afterlife. <laughs> That's extremely touching. How did Mr. Joe sound like on the telephone? Not hollow, but normal, right? Full of life? Well, I asked this question on the Reddit post, and Phoenix responded, saying that Mr. Joe's voice definitely sounded like a normal human, and that he was just pissed off and upset about this bill. He had all the pertinent information related to the account, including the answers to the security questions asked. I was thinking that the only normal explanation would be that one of her friends, knowing that she's stressed out and has no time, tried to handle the bill for her. But they wouldn't have all that kind of information. So I don't know. If it was actually Mr. Joe from the afterlife, then while this is somewhat sad, it's also a very beautiful experience. Mrs. Mary has someone watching over her from beyond. Eighth Story Story Title I Think I Died in Early July Author Name Nestle 13 Do you guys know the whole theory about how when people die in one timeline, they shift into another? I think that may have happened to me. Back in early July of this year, my family, father, 54, mother, 45, me, 19, brother, 16, and sister, 13. We're going on a road trip to Montana to visit our grandparents. Prior to the trip, I had a horrible, horrible feeling about going. I kept having flashes of car accidents in my head, and I was sure that we would get into one if we left. It was so strange, because I have a pretty severe anxiety disorder, but this didn't feel like my anxiety at all, and I never have anxiety about road trips, I love them. So we left Saturday of that week. I had told my parents I had a bad feeling about driving up there, but they dismissed it as me being anxious, but I had never felt so certain about anything in my life before. Getting into that car felt like signing my death sentence. So we get about six hours in, and at this point, I start to think I was being ridiculous, and a wave of calmness just washes over me. This is where the proverbial waste matter hits the fan. My dad passes an underpass, and everything just shifts. I feel like I saw everything in slow motion for a whole four minutes or so. My parents were joking beforehand, but their faces moved so slowly and then the light in the car started to shift. This was the scary part, because I thought it must have been going insane. For a few seconds, 
there was a huge illumination of light into our car, and I looked at my family and couldn't tell who they were or what they meant to me. And then, it's like everything just came back. The light shifted back, and I knew who everyone was, but it felt like something imperceptible had changed. I closed my eyes and tried to make sense of the past few minutes, and when I reached back to remember, I saw blood, our car and another minivan in shambles on the side of the highway, right beyond the underpass, and mangled bodies. I remember sensations I shouldn't have known. What spattered brain matter looks like, the smell of something burning, the way I couldn't breathe. But this never happened. Yet I remember that the car in front of us had switched lanes, even though there was a truck right in front of us, realized it at the last second, and hit us with a lateral impact. I have no history of psychosis, and I have never been in any sort of car accident. This was not post-traumatic stress disorder, and I have never had anxiety over being in the car in any sort of way prior to this. And maybe I could have just brushed it off, but I still think about it when I'm driving my own car and it's made me a more cautious driver. I don't know what happened, it's just a weird situation, and I remember having the distinct feeling in that moment that I had died in some sense. I am not a spiritually sensitive person by any means. I'm a scientist at heart, but this truly was something I just cannot explain. And I fully accept that I might be reading too much into this, and for some reason, I imagined an event that never happened but I thought I would share it anyway. Personal Thoughts This makes me think of my own mother, actually. She'd have visions of the future in her dreams quite often, many of which would come to pass. It gave her great anxiety to have that kind of information, a fear of dreaming also. In your case, it's almost more real time. There was another story I've read from here recently, that was along these lines of foresight ability in the heat of the event, because your reality resets back. Although the description of the light effect is new, hmm. Perhaps that particular detail is common, but most don't remember it. Of course you could be correct too, maybe this is just a crossover event to an alternate reality. It's possible, maybe that's what the light effect was. Have you noticed anything else different in your normal day to day life? Ninth Story Story Title I Went Somewhere That Doesn't Exist Author Name CEO of Bitchcraft Huh, quite the name. So, I'm looking through this amazing subreddit and remember an odd experience I had when I was 13, almost 14. At this point in time, I was dealing with a lot of paranoia and anxiety because I would read creepypastas every night. I couldn't sleep with the light off if I slept at all. I couldn't go down my hall without a light on, even during the day. I refused to take my dogs out at night. I was just terrified of everything. But I was obsessed with socialization, I always have been, and my church youth group was going to a bonfire event. The youth leader told us that we'd be going to this enormous property that some farmer owned. Sounded weird, especially considering a lot of the town is fairly urban, but worn down and abandoned. He said that it was near the university, which is even weirder because that's the most urban part of town. I found it just odd that I never had heard of this huge ranch or whatever. It was a small town and everyone knew everyone, especially my family. Okay, anyway, we go and it's already dark out, it's also cold, hence the bonfire idea. I vaguely remember us deciding to play hide and seek or something. We used to play this game called zombies, and one team would be the humans and one would be the zombies. The humans got a minute to hide, no lights were allowed. If a zombie touched you, you were changed to a zombie. If they couldn't turn all the humans within 30 minutes, they lost. I think we decided to play that, on an enormous farm, the extents of which we didn't know. This was a terrible idea in hindsight, 
What the hell? Anyway, usually I hide with someone because I was so scared, but this time I got separated somehow. I couldn't see anything. I was walking through the woods and eventually reached a big opening with really overgrown grass. I shouldn't have been there because of snake risk, but I went anyways. I was determined to hide in the grass, on my stomach, and stay silent. Normally I'd hate getting dirty, everything about this was abnormal. I felt no fear despite being alone and surrounded by darkness. My phone flashlight stopped working, but I just shrugged it off. I had been on the phone with my almost boyfriend at the time, but it all got staticky and I gave up and ended the call. So I lay down flat, resting my chin on my hands, and noticed I wasn't cold, and neither was the ground. It was oddly warm. It should have been cold because it was November, and had been icy the past week. I actually felt very comfortable and warm. I felt like I laid there for an hour. I never heard them. Normally they're running around calling, Oh humans, where are you? And being silly teenagers. They'd hush each other when they thought they heard someone. But I didn't hear anyone, just bugs. In fact, I didn't even hear nearby cars, which I always hear anywhere in that town. I found it really strange that they never thought to come this way. It was just to the left of the bonfire, through some trees. I kept checking my phone but it wasn't working. The clock had frozen at the same time it had been when I had hung up with my almost boyfriend. 7.16 Finally I just thought they might get worried that they couldn't find me. Surely they'd stop playing by now and I'd finally won for once. I got to my feet, dusted myself off, and headed back. As soon as I entered the tree line, I heard them calling my name and suddenly got very cold. I burst through the trees to the bonfire and was like, guys I'm right here. They'd been searching for me for an hour. I grabbed my phone out of my pocket. The clock now read 9.02 and I had tons of missed calls and texts. I explained to them my phone wasn't working out there. Out where? In the big empty field. They didn't know what I was talking about. The owner of the property explained there was no fields only fenced in pastures that he had locked us out of. I said, but it was right there to the left. I laid down in the tall grass for like ever until I gave up and came back. I gestured to the dirt on the knees of my jeans. So I took them to the tree line where I'd just come from and started walking, telling them that it was just through there. But the trees never ended. There was no field. There were just woods for miles. We pulled up Google Maps. There were no fields. It was all trees. Wherever I went wasn't actually there, but I'm just glad that I made it back. Personal Thoughts So thinking about the story, the more I read it, the more I'm convinced that aliens are involved. I know it's probably a meme by now, with me, but I think this is aliens, so the first aspect of course is the time freeze. Whenever time is affected, my mind's needle starts sinking towards aliens, but it's hardly only that. There are other signs too, other elements. I think that where you were hiding, the memory of it, hiding in a tall field of grass that doesn't exist, I think that was a construct. I think it was a memory your mind fabricated to protect yourself from the reality of your abduction. It actually all fits, from your phone disconnecting, not updating time, to not feeling cold anymore, not hearing cars, not hearing your friends searching for you. Actually the more I speak about this, the more assured I become that this was an abduction event. Hmm, did you have any odd physical markings after? Let me know. And as always, if you enjoyed this narration, show it some love. A quick tap of the like button will do. 10th Story Story Title I Remember a Band That Doesn't Exist Author Name Grey Soldiers 56 First off, let me apologize if this isn't allowed. 
but I need to share this because it's been driving me insane for years, and this subreddit seems to be the only place to share it. I created this account specifically to search for this band. Like all kids in the 80s, I was obsessed with rock bands. I went to countless concerts, bought posters, fawned over the bands, bought their cassettes and tapes. I would stay up late to catch MTV in order to catch my favorite bands. A number of the bands that I listen to, I still see around. A quick Google search will bring up articles and songs, Wikipedia pages, social media pages, and all of that. But there's one band that I remember listening to that I can't find any information on. They weren't my favorite band, but I remember attending concerts and putting up posters, buying their records at thrift shops and all that. Their name was Grey Soldiers. Their genre was sort of like a mix between Motley Crue, Guns N' Roses, and Bon Jovi. Like most of the bands, they had big hair and wore makeup and crazy outfits. They slept around with multiple women, drank constantly, and abused drugs all the time. Their concerts were crazy and at one point I distinctly remember that the bass guitarist had passed out on stage due to the alcohol usage. He turned out fine. My parents didn't let me attend the concert all that much, I remember, because of this incident. Problem is that my parents don't remember this. My friends that went to the concerts with me don't remember this. I have mental images of the band in my mind. I can remember watching interviews with them. I can remember listening to their songs. I remember the names of their songs, lyrics, the chords and riffs and beats. I remember the names of the members, but there's no record of them ever existing. After high school, I remember packing up the posters and such, and having my dad put them out in the attic so I would look more mature. But in recent years, I went up there and can't find any Grey Soldiers memorabilia. There's other memorabilia up there, just none of them. I have no mental health issues, nothing like that at all, but I distinctly remember a band that nobody else does. I remember intimate details of men who have never existed, presumably, and is driving me crazy. The vocalist was named Michael Green. The guitarist was named Tommy Harris. The drummer was Glenn, but I don't recall his last name. Maybe Ferris or Ferris? The keyboardist was William Helms, and the bass guitarist was Victor Martinez. I remember the names vividly. She wasn't an official member, but the vocalist's girlfriend was a background singer. Her name was Natalie. I do remember a few of their songs. Fire Fever was a part of their debut album, and I recall the following lyrics of that song. Fire Fever, it's dancing around the town, making you run and turn around. It sounded like a very peppy song. The second song was Under Still Waters, which was a very sad love song with the lyrics, If you let me to drown, would you still care? Under the still waters, we shall go under. And then, under the still waters, there's no swimming up, there's no saving yourself. And I remember that it was very depressing. I don't remember the other lyrics, but I can remember the names. Bloody Nightmare. Rose Walked Away. Clue Me In. Sky High. Underground Tunnel. Shore. And The Mark. Personal Thoughts. Well, that's fascinating, isn't it? I've had one Mandela effect before myself, but it was minor, just misremembering how Fruit Loops were spelled. Nothing nearly as dramatic or hard-hitting as recollecting a band that seemingly no longer exists. I mean, where do you go from there? I, I know I would feel crazy too. No doubt about that. Hopefully someone else on Reddit or here in the comments will remember that band too. That'd be nice.
Maybe they really just fell out of obscurity and all their information was wiped. Although the fact that the memorabilia in the attic is no longer there. Hmm, that's very strange. Maybe your parents threw that out too? Hmm, but why would they leave other memorabilia there? I don't know. Or perhaps you've crossed into an alternate universe territory. Maybe that's what the Mandela Effect is, actually. Just a symptom of crossing over. Could be. 11th Story Story Title Weird Experience with an Old TV Author Name Indiv underscore B This happened back in 2017, in the middle of winter. Back then we had this pretty old TV in the living room. I don't know how old exactly. As far as I know, it's been around since before I was born, but really old. A fat CRT screen and all that. It makes a distinct sound when starting up. The click of a button, followed by some electric sound I'm not sure how to describe, like the screen warming up or something. I don't know. So it was around 9.30, and unusually enough, everyone was already asleep. I'd just gotten out of the bathroom, when I heard the sound of the TV turning on. I remember also that the electric sound was quite a bit louder than usual, like it had a little more punch to it. I know that sounds weird, but it's the only way I can describe it. Anyway, as I said, everyone was asleep, so I thought it was strange and went to check. I saw an image of a little girl in a sundress, in black and white, and she was laughing. I could only stare at it for two seconds, my brain trying to process what the hell is happening, before she glanced at me and instantly stopped laughing, making this sort of, oh crap I got caught, facial expression and disappearing. This all happened very fast, and when she was gone, it was accompanied by that electric sound again. I was seriously spooked. I washed my face and tried to calm down. The TV was also working normally, and nothing else was weird in the living room. I thought I was going crazy, but I think this probably really happened. I have no history with any mental health issues, and I never used drugs or any such thing. Basically, I was stone sober, but to this day I can't think of any reasonable explanation for this event. I don't think this is an important detail, but the TV was not on. There's a small LED light under the screen that lights up when it's on, and it was off throughout the whole thing. I just stumbled upon the sub, and I'm wondering if people here have had similar experiences. I don't believe in the paranormal and such, but I'm honestly just at a loss here. Personal Thoughts So regarding the fact that it was almost 10 at night, Everyone was asleep. I assume this meant that you were fatigued too. Perhaps your conscious and dreamlike states were somehow mixed or merged together. Sort of like sleep paralysis conjuring up hallucinations, often terrifying ones. Though usually this only happens when awaking suddenly, before your body can. Your case seems different though, since even if you had fallen asleep in the bathroom, it would only produce stage 1 or 2 of NREM sleep or non-rapid eye movement. A sudden jolt out of that doesn't produce hallucinations, to my knowledge. The other possible explanation is this was a signal being picked up by your TV antenna. Those old TVs often had them built in, and they were sensitive. But the fact the TV LED wasn't on, and the fact the girl in the TV appeared to look at you and react to you seeing her. I can't explain that. Spooky. Twelfth Story Story title My uncle's dog is completely different Author name Mr. Stuffed Baconator A few years ago, I went to my home country of Brazil and I got to see my uncle's dog for the first time. It was a white Samoyed-esque dog with white fur and pointy ears. 
His name is Sebastian, and I even took a picture on my phone of him. So flash forward to last year, my family decided to live in Brazil. We arrive at the airport and my uncle picks us up in his van. During the ride to the city we'll be living in, we start discussing some stuff and I ask how Sebastian is doing. My uncle says he's doing well or whatever and I ask if I can see him again. We arrive at his house where we see his wife and I say hello, but standing right next to her was this huge Labrador. I thought it was weird how they would get two dogs and not mention it. I asked my aunt what his name is, and she says, What are you talking about? This is Sebastian. I stood there for a second and just thought back. It's one thing to forget what color a dog is, but to forget what breed it was entirely seems unlikely. I played it off and pet him for a bit. As soon as I could, I checked my mom's phone to find the picture I took of him and me. And lo and behold, the dog in the picture was a Labrador. This is the weirdest thing to ever happen to me. Does anyone know what could have happened? Personal thoughts. Okay, so this is fascinating. There seems to be an influx of stories related to memory shifts lately. There was another one maybe a couple weeks ago. Uh, a person whose job it is to maintain properties and condos. He visits one takes a picture because the layout is different, he goes to wash his face and then he comes back out and everything is back to how it should be, including the picture. Your situation is so similar. It's a memory, although it is more long term. My guess in his case was probably the same as yours. Somehow you have the ability to witness alternate universes for a brief moment. Or perhaps there's a trigger we're yet unaware of that can cause these visions without an actual crossover event. Did you notice anything out of place when you first saw the dog as a Samoyed? Hmm. If not, I have no ideas. But at least it's not a painful memory. 13th Story Story title What just happened? Am I going mad? Author name I have no willy. I just left work literally not 10 minutes ago, and the strangest thing just happened. So I work in a Dublin airport, and the time is now 1.07 AM. As I'm leaving after the last flight has just left the airport, I'm walking out through the terminal building, which is completely empty now, all shops closed, and nobody is around. As I am leaving, I see one of the cleaners walking out from a corridor to my left, and I give the usual, good night now to anyone I see on my way out, and he does the same back, and walks the one-way system down in the opposite direction. Now here's where it gets weird. I walk a little more from Terminal 1 to Terminal 2, which is about a 15 minute walk, in order to get out to the level of the car park. And as I'm walking towards the last door, before I get out to the passenger area door to my left, it opens and out comes the exact same cleaner I saw literally 15 minutes ago. Down to the small Irish flag pin he was wearing on the lanyard of his ID and he looks at me and says, Good night now. And I looked at him and asked, How did you get from one side of the terminal to here so fast before me? Jokingly. He looked at me like I had two heads and said, Mate, I've been cleaning the storage room for the last hour. Seriously, what just happened? This was the exact same person, same height, same grey slightly balding hair, same Irish flag pin on the ID lanyard. The way I came is the only way to get to the exit I was leaving through, as it's a one-way system with multiple ID locks you need to get through to access it. Personal Thoughts So the first thing that pops into my mind is another memory shift, but on reflection this really doesn't make sense because nothing actually changed, it was just the location. The person was the same. Hmm, so maybe some sort of ghost? Did you physically interact with him in any way? If not, then you could try confirming who he is at your job. Perhaps you can look up IDs from all cleaners working in a terminal area you walk through. It's quite possible you could find him. If he's not an ethereal being, 
then it strikes me as a sort of foresight ability that you have. Has this ever, has anything like this ever happened to you before? And for all the listeners, let me know too in the comments if anything similar has happened to you. Personally, I've never predicted the future. I know a lot of people have this sort of ability, but it usually comes to them in dreams, not manifested in reality as illusions. 14th Story Story Title I got into a car accident with the person I made in a video game. Author Name Swimma Steve My name is Steve. First post here. Years and years ago, when I was young, I used to play video games like any young kid did. It was just my thing. I played them every day. I had an Xbox 360. I didn't want anyone to know what my real name was or anything like that. I don't know, I was weird. But I made an email for my Xbox Live account. The name on the email I created was under the name of Tom Liza. Not really sure why I named the account that, but it was the first name that came to my head, so I was like, what the heck, I'll just use that. So for years, I've had this account created with a fake name, Tom Liza. I stopped playing video games, and five or six years go by, and I still haven't touched a video game or console in general. I'm out one night with my best friend Will. We've just come back from playing dodgeball at this place. We went out on a Friday night for some fun. I was 17 then, and just got my license. Like any new driver, most of the time you don't know where you're going. I was stopped at a red light on Route 347, road I was on headed home. I whipped out my GPS on my phone, and it told me that I needed to get into the turning lane. Stupid me, without looking, turns into the turning lane, and sideswiped this 2004 Toyota Corolla. At this point, my heart is pounding through my chest because I'm 17, and I've never been in a car accident, and nonetheless driving in general for that long. This guy gets out of the car, pissed. Long story short, the police arrive, file a police report, and the night goes on from there. I get home, tell my mom that I got into a car accident, and all that jazz, and she flips out on me. A few days go by and I receive a copy of the accident report. I open the letter and begin to read the report and I stop. I took a second and a third look at the police report. The name of the person I got into an accident with was Tom Liza. I still tell the story to this day. I'm 23 now, but I always get chills from it. Anything ever happen like this to you guys? Personal Thoughts Well, this is a fun little glitch, which indeed could be a wild coincidence. But then really, how many people are named Tom Liza? If this doesn't have a supernatural component to it, then the odds involved here would be borderline astronomical. It does seem impossible, doesn't it? But I don't know. I've never heard of someone playing a video game and that having a, an effect of creating a person. I mean, a lot of people play The Sims, but you don't see those characters walking around. Hmm. That concludes this little story. I hope you enjoyed my narration of it. If you did, consider leaving a like. And also, if you're new around here, consider subscribing. I upload videos three times a week. 15th Story Story Title My significant other's client never lived where she remembers. Author Name Brayson Okay, my significant other works in healthcare in the community. She visits clients in their homes to provide needed care and a significant amount of her clientele is elderly, loosely important in the story. She has a number of regular clients that she knows by name alone where they live. Now she's had this client that she's worked with for over five years and has always gone to unit number 21 for her visits. It is in an independent living complex with some staff for emergency, security, and on-site needs. This morning, she arrived as normal for her client's regular care, 
She's visited so often that she says she has muscle memory to get there, and pulls into her regular spot and proceeds to go to the door to knock. As she knocks, there's no answer. In over five years, there was only one time where this client did not answer, and due to being elderly, she had fallen and was in need of help. After three attempts to knock, my significant other starts to get concerned. Rather than ask the home's front desk to let her in, she decides to call. Maybe she was away for the weekend, or maybe she was needing help again. The walkway is the one she knows. The exterior was the one she knows. The client answers the phone, and she states that she's home and waiting for my significant other's arrival. My SO says that she's been knocking for a few minutes, but without any answer. My SO then asks her client the sweet number, and she says, I'm in number 8. Unit 8 is across the lot, with the only access from another side street. My SO is flabbergasted. She has never entered through that street to visit this client before, and is adamant that her client only has ever lived in Unit 21. So she heads over now, thinking that she's moved since her last visit. It does happen in these communities. Everything looks different in this area. Finish work outside, sidewalks, doors, all of it. My SO knocks and walks in. She starts her care and jokingly asks how she enjoys the new place. And as the client is answering, my SO notices that the furniture placement, colors, stains, everything is exactly the same as she remembers from the other unit. The client says she's always lived in the suite since she moved in, and then my SO is ever further confused. She finishes her care and goes to her car, some downtime between clients, and tries to process what just happened. She says with every fiber of my being that this client lived in Unit 21. Every single visit was Unit Number 21. Her autopilot drove her to Unit 21. The exterior of the suite she knew was for Unit 21. This is her very first memorable experience with the glitch, and she's just so dumbfounded by it. She's in the process of asking co-workers who are familiar with the client where she lived. She's worried for both answers, especially if they say Unit 21. Edit. All previous visits on the log show unit number 8. One of her co-workers finally got back to her. She only remembers the client being in unit number 8, so now my SO feels like she's losing her mind and doesn't know what to make of it. This may lead down a rabbit hole because she's wholly convinced she remembers correctly. Another edit. Breaking news. Literally a minute ago another co-worker just messaged her saying that she knows it's suite number 21. We're even more concerned now, and I have chills. This is messed up. Personal Thoughts So as always with these fragmented memory events, Mandela style oddities, my mind goes to the alternate universe explanation. But in this case I'm not entirely convinced. Why you may ask? Because your SO mentioned that the exact same arrangement of details are in her client's apartment. The uh, new one, quote unquote. The same furniture, same placement, same stains in the same location. So if it was an alternate universe, would even the stains be the same? Just in a different unit across the lot? Maybe not impossible, but it seems unlikely. This also throws a wrench in the idea that she just moved and forgot about it. Being elderly with Alzheimer's. If that was the case, the stains wouldn't be there. It's a small detail, but it caught my attention. The devil's in the details, right? So what can explain this? I actually have no idea. It's a simple but unsettling glitch. Now if you've enjoyed this narration, consider showing it some love. Apparently it enjoys deep sensual massages of the like button.